Hello, and welcome to my Tech Talks channel. In this first video, I will do a manual walkthrough of how I'm currently installing Arch Linux on my laptops and desktops. As a heads up, all my machines are UEFI. In this tutorial, I will configure BTRFS, Pipewire, KVM, ZRAM combined with working hibernation, and Cinnamon as the desktop on a KVM virtual machine. I will also include some goodies for ThinkPad convertibles such as the L13 Yoga. I gathered all this material from the ArchWiki and other sources, as well as many hours of my own testing and development. Some of the commands I'll be using are very long in the interest of completeness, so please pause this video as needed. Let's get started on a freshly booted virtual machine. Let's get started by syncing the network time. Time, date. CTL. Set. NTP. True. Next, we'll set up the reflector for the uh, mirrors. Reflector. country. I'm in the US. Age, six. Protocol, HTTPS. Latest, five. Sort, rate. And we'll save it in slash etc slash pacman dot d slash mirror list and hit enter so and uh while that's done we will update our Pac-Man databases. So Pac-Man minus SYY should do the trick. So the uh, databases are synchronized. Let's take a look at our storage situation. LSBLK. And uh, here we have VDA. If you have a like a physical laptop you're installing this on, You'll be uh, using uh, probably something like NVMe 0 and 1, or for older machines, maybe even SDA, but we're using VDA uh, today. So let's partition VDA. GDisk slash dev slash VDA. We're creating a new GPT uh, partition table. And uh, let's create the first partition. New, partition name is one, hit enter. Enter for the first sector. Last sector, we want to have this be the EFI boot partition. So uh, a good size would be plus 300 megabytes. And hex code in this case is EF zero zero next partition will be number two first sector is default last sector we'd like this to be the resume from hibernation partition or also swap partition so that size should be like say uh, eight gigs of ram plus one extra gig uh, in case we want to uh, have a little swap that we need to uh, store in the resume partition. So in this case, uh, we'll put plus 9G. Just change this number as you see fit depending on your devices. So 9 gigabytes. Uh, the hex code would be uh, Linux swap. So 8200. And the third and final partition, default is three, 
first sector is default. Last sector is the rest of the disk. And that will be a Linux file system. And it will be BTRFS. So let's see what we have. P for print. So we have 300 megabytes for the EFI system partition, 9 gigabytes for Linux swap, which will be our resume from partition, and the rest of the disk will be a Linux file system where we'll actually be installing Arch. So let's write to it. Yes, we'd like to proceed. And there we go. Let's do another LSBLK. There we have VDA 1 through 3, where we're going to be installing the system. All right, so let us format the EFI partition uh, with FAT32. We can do this by typing mkfs.vfat slash dev slash VDA 1. That's the swap partition. mkswap slash dev slash VDA2. And we'd like to swap on it now. So turn on swap, swap on, slash dev, slash VDA2. And next, for the third and final partition, we'd like to uh, create a BTRFS file system. So, mk btrfs dot btrfs rather mkfs dot btrfs there I think I get it right uh, we'll label this as arch slash dev slash vda3 And there we go. Uh, next, we'll want to mount this new BTRFS file system. Mount slash dev slash VDA3 on slash mount. So let's change directory into the new file system, CD slash mount. And let's create the subvolumes. So we can do that by typing btrfs subvolume create the root subvolume with just the at symbol. Next, I'll press up arrow once for the uh, history and create the home subvolume. Do the same thing for var. and data. I use the data subvolume for storing uh, virtual machine images or S Steam installations or whatever else, some huge files that I just don't want to include in certain snapshots. Um, so for time shift, which we'll be installing later, uh, at and at home or the root subvolume and the home subvolume are the only things you really need. The rest are optional. So moving right along, let us move back to the uh, home directory, typing CD and hit enter. And let's unmount this BTRFS file system. Since we'd like to remount the uh, subvolumes uh, with certain options that I will demonstrate shortly u mount slash mount and now we'd like to uh, mount the root subvolume by typing mount my dash o for option um, and i looked through the arch wiki and the following um, options uh, for mounting uh, work very well for me and they probably will work pretty all right for you. So um, if you have any questions about these particular options that I'm using here, uh, feel free to uh, check on the Arch Wiki uh, and do your own research. So first option is no A time. 
compress equals Z STD, Z standard, space underscore cache, discard equals async, subval equals the roots of volume at slash dev slash VDA3. And that'll be on slash MNT. So that looks good. Hit enter. So now that that's mounted with the correct options for uh, typical options for SSD, which is what most people are using these days, uh, let's create the some of the initial directories. So mkdir dash p slash mount slash open curly brace boot slash efi comma home comma var comma data. And we hit close the curly brace. And uh, so that will cover the initial uh, subvolumes that we created above. All right. So next, we hit up arrow twice. And uh, so the next subvolume will be home. It'll be slash mount slash home and up arrow again let's take care of var at var and mount var and finally the sub volume for data data slash mount, slash data. All right. So we haven't forgotten the first partition, of course, is our EFI boot partition. So let's mount that as well. Mount, slash dev, slash VDA1 on slash mount, slash boot, slash EFI. There we go. So now let's do an initial pack strap and install the initial packages. I'll be using the uh, long-term support kernel as I'd like things to be as stable as possible for this rolling release. Um, it's worked very well for me um, and the uh, LTS kernel as of uh, today's date uh, has been settled very nicely. Um, I think we're in the .40 uh, release uh, for the 5.10 kernel, um, which is plenty mature uh, for this tutorial. So here we go. I'm going to copy paste here because I don't think you guys want me to hunt and peck for all these packages and probably make mistakes. So do feel free to pause um, uh, this video. Um, and then make the notes as you see fit. Again, uh, this is a good example of why eventually when you do enough of these and you're comfortable with the configurations uh, of your own, uh, you want to convert this, uh, these steps to a uh, uh, shell script, which shouldn't be too hard. So um, feel free to pause the video because I'm just going to hit enter here. Um, And uh, we'll be back when it's done. All right, and it's done. Next step is to generate the file system table for auto mounting. So, gen fs tab, generate uuids, slash mount, and store it in slash mount, 
slash etc slash fs tab. All right. I think now the next step is to change root into our new base install. So arch dash root slash mount. And uh, now, because we're going to be ending up with ZRAM as primary swap, uh, we'd like the ZRAM to be higher priority. So in order to do that, we'd like to make sure that um, the physical partition swap is low priority. So the kernel only swaps to it as a last resort when all other options have been exhausted and uh, we don't want to have uh, uh, it uh, force close certain processes. So um, let's do that by typing nano slash ATC slash FS tab. We are in the chew root, the change root uh, environment. So we don't have slash mount anymore in front of uh, slash ETC slow nano slash ETC slash FS tab. And what I like to do often for the BTRFS partitions is get rid of the extra sub ball ID. It's, that's not very useful, especially for time shift. Uh, there's one up here as well for the root. So I'm getting rid of the sub ball ID. You don't have to do this, but um, I'd like to, because I'd like to keep my file system table as clean as possible. And here we go. And that's taken care of. So for the swap, I like the priority pry equals 10. That's very low priority. I just want to make sure, um, again, this may be fully automatic. I haven't fully tested that yet, but uh, uh, this is low enough priority that the kernel will use physical swap uh, only as a last resort and only for uh, hibernation functionality uh, for laptops. So that looks good. Um, I'm going to write this out. And there we go. Okay, so next, let me clear the terminal. Next, let us set the time zone. ln dash sf slash user slash share slash zone info. So in my case, I'm in America and I'm in the Los Angeles time zone. So link that to slash etc slash local time and hit enter. So let's um, synchronize the hardware clock to the uh, system time. So HW clock dash dash sys to HC. There we go. So Next step is to set and generate the locale. We can do this with a simple set command. I'll just copy paste that here. Again, pause the video as needed. Uh, this will take care of uh, the locale that I like to set. Again, your uh, situation may vary as usual. And there we go. So um, 
Next, we uh, set the locale.conf by typing echo quotes lang equal en underscore us dot utf utf excuse me dash eight quotes and write it to slash etc slash locale dot conf All right, so let's set the host name. Would be echo. Quotes, I'll call this machine Arch. Very imaginative, as you can see. And I'll write it to slash etc slash hostname. Next, I'd like to take care of the hosts file. So echo quotes 127.0.0.1 local host see hosts I'll do the same for the next line. IP version six, colon, colon one. And finally, for the local domain, would be 127.0.1.1 arch dot local domain arch is our host name right so arch dot local domain space arch and that looks good hit enter all right so host name hosts set up um, so let's set the password for root. Password. And let's type it again. Fantastic. So let's clear the screen because another huge command is coming up where we install many of the pieces we need for this Arch install. So you'll definitely need to pause the video here if you'd like to uh, copy any of this down. A um, lot of uh, standard tools and utilities. Um, so nothing too um, surprising here. I like to also install my printing and uh, uh, the pipe wire stuff, uh, the KVMQ EMU stuff, um, networking, um, basic system configuration, Bluetooth, things like that. So I'm going to hit enter and I will be back when it's done. And we're done. So now we are going to install Grub. So clear the screen and do Grub dash install dash dash target pulse x86 underscore 64 dash EFI dash dash EFI dash directory is in slash boot slash EFI 
and we'll label the bootloader dash bootloader dash id equals arch linux and that looks good to me so i'll hit enter and there we go so next we'd like to set the up the uh, grub configuration with the kernel boot parameters for resuming from hibernation so we need to tell the kernel what the uuid of the resume partition is in this case the swap partition uh, which we've set up for this, expressly for this purpose so in order to do that i just type cat slash etc slash fs tab and the swap partition has in my case this uid of course it's unique so yours will for sure be different so i'm going to copy this and then i'm going to nano slash etc slash default slash grub hit enter i'm going to go to the default linux kernel parameters and type resume equals and then what we just copied we'll paste it right in here so that's the uuid for the swap partition and that's where the kernel knows it can resume from should it go into hibernation so write that out and now we're ready to uh, create the configuration so rub dash mk config write it out to slash boot slash grub slash grub dot cfg and hit enter there we go uh, let's enable at this stage i'd like to do this uh, enable certain basic system services um, so system ctl enable acpi daemon I'd also like to enable the Avahi daemon. I'd like to enable Bluetooth. I need printing, so I'd like to, at this stage, enable cups. I'd also like to enable the uh, SSD trim. Also, for KVM, I'd like to enable the libvirt daemon. Then, of course, this is pretty much required these days, is networking. So, system, CTL, enable, network, manager I also like to enable the reflector it's usually I'd like to have this run every time I boot uh, to set up the mirrors uh, fresh every time for each boot 
I'd like to be able to SSH into uh, this new machine. So systemctl enable sshd. And this is primarily uh, for portable battery operated devices. You want to uh, start TLP, so system CTL enable TLP. All right. And uh, I found I have best results by enabling the Bluetooth adapter early, in particular for older machines, they seem to respond best to, um, to that. What I'm gonna do is nano slash etc slash Bluetooth main dot conf. Go down to the policies section And under auto enable, I like to make this true. With a desktop environment like Cinnamon, which we'll install uh, later, uh, you can control the uh, adapter power, uh, the Bluetooth adapter power as you see fit. So, enter and yes. All right. So let's add the user. My name is Steven, so I will paste this in here. Pause the video as needed. So I'd like to be added to the following groups, a whole list of groups. Um, uh, like to be an S -S sudo user, uh, so I need to add myself to wheel. I like the Z shell um, as well as uh, being able to uh, run KVM virtual machines without having to enter the uh, my sudo password every time. So I'm also in the libvirt group. Um, so I feel, feel that uh, this list of groups uh, could be uh, uh, very useful to you as well. So I'm going to hit enter. All right. So I'd like to give myself a new password. Password. Steven. Give myself, retype it, and there we go. So let me add myself um, uh, to the Vsudo group. So, uh, I mean, the <laughs> be able to give myself a, a, a sudo privileges. <laughs> so uh, do that by typing editor editor variable, set it to nano, so I'm using nano, and then v-i-s-u-do. Hit enter and com uncomment the wheel section, because I'm in group wheel, I like to be able to sudo. So make sure that's uncommented for wheel, and then X for exit and save the buffer. And there we go. So before we do make init copy IO, we'd like to uh, make some changes in the configuration file. So nano slash etc slash mk init copy IO dot conf. So for Intel machines, and this tutorial assumes Intel, um, I probably should have mentioned that uh, early on, but um, uh, you guys who have AMD uh, uh, can put the appropriate modules in here. Just check the Arch Wiki. So I'd like to be able to um, have the uh, kernel uh, uh, load the i915 uh, module early as early as possible. And again, this is totally optional. You probably won't need this. I just tend to do this out of habit. Um, seems to work better for older machines uh, if you load that early uh, so that the uh, display manager will have something to uh, uh, 
uh, to load when it when it comes up. And uh, since we want to set this up for hibernation for this tutorial in the hooks section, what I like to do is add resume. So we can resume from hibernation. That goes in the hooks list. So let's exit here, write it out to the file. All right, now we're ready to mkinet copy IO. And we're using the long term support Linux kernel. So dash p space Linux dash LTS. If you're using the regular kernel, then just type Linux here. But in this case, we've installed the Linux LTS kernel earlier. Okay. Let that work. And we'll be back when it's done. And it's done. So now we go ahead and clear the screen. And what I'm going to do, make sure I don't do any typos here, is change to the reflector directory, installation directory, because we want to do some uh, configurations here. So what I want to do is move reflector.conf to reflector.conf.org. We'd like to nano reflector and create our own configuration here. And here we put in what works best for me. Your mileage may vary, but this works very well for me here on the west coast of the United States. Again, this is pretty much a repeat of what we did at the beginning of this tutorial. So write it out. And let's enable the reflector service system. CTL. Enable. Reflector.service. There we go. Next we'd like to add a backup for when the kernel gets updated, uh, just in case you wanna roll back uh, the kernel. I found this very useful uh, to add this hook for Pac-Man. So we can do that by typing mkdir slash etc slash pacman dot d slash hooks. So next we nano slash etc slash pacman dot d slash hooks slash 50 dash boot backup dot hook. This is very similar to what I found works very well from the uh, Arch Wiki. So we can read up on that uh, by searching for these terms and uh, make changes as you see fit. Um, but I found if I stick with uh, these uh, settings, uh, it works very well. So in here, I'll paste in the file contents. Again, pause is needed, but for the trigger, we want uh, to do this operation for any upgrades, installs, or removals. Uh, for anything under user slash libs slash modules slash asterisk slash VM Linux. And uh, the action will be, uh, we have rsync already installed. I made sure of that. Um, We'll be backing up the boot as a description. Um, this is before any transaction. We'd like to do the backup. We are sync it uh, from boot to uh, slash boot dash backup. 
So if anything goes wrong with a, uh, a kernel upgrade or a module upgrade or, or whatever uh, through Pac-Man, uh, you can there's a possibility if, if you boot the live media that you can uh, roll back um, as you see fit and hopefully recover from it if something should go wrong. It seldom does because we're using the LTS uh, kernel, but you never know. I always like to have uh, a local backup at the very least uh, by doing it when I do any kind of upgrades. Control X to exit. Hit yes to write it out. All right then. So next, we are done with initial installation. So hit type exit. U mount dash A. Um, and this unmounts anything that's not busy. Uh, don't worry about the uh, certain busy uh, warnings. Um, that can't be helped at this stage. And now we get to reboot the machine. Okay, we're back at the uh, freshly rebooted virtual machine. I've logged in as myself. Uh, should you need to uh, reconfigure network, you can use the nmtui command, like so. And uh, as root, of course, uh, if you should ever need networking uh, to continue here, which you shouldn't need to if you're on the actual console. So let's move right along. And uh, let us set up yay for the AUR because we need some AUR packages. So we type git clone https colon slash slash aur dot arch linux dot org slash yay and hit enter. There we go, CDEA. All right, so we'd like to uh, make the package. So make pkg si package build. And hit enter. And we'll be right back after this completes. All right, and we're back. So let us uh, change back into the uh, uh, home directory. And uh, we don't need the uh, yay build directory anymore. So we type rm-fr yay and nuke it. All right, so now we'll install the ZRAM daemon. So we type yay, dash capital S, ZRAM D. And uh, we'll trust here, but I suggest you uh, do due diligence with all AUR packages and make sure you're comfortable with installing other people's packages. Uh, so you definitely for yourself uh, want to review the diffs. But in this tutorial, we don't have time. This video is long enough already. Uh, we'll just go ahead with the defaults. And we're done. So now let's enable the ZRAM service. So sudo system ctl enable now please zram d dot service all right so let's take a look at our memory and swap configuration so type free minus h 
that looks good. Um, I gave this KVM uh, four uh, gigabytes of virtual memory, and we gave the uh, swap partition for the hibernation resume uh, uh, 12, uh, excuse me, um, uh, nine actually, but I rounded down to eight uh, Gibby bytes. So that's a total of 12, as you can see. So um, let's take a look at the priority uh, of the uh, uh, swap areas to make sure that uh, ZRAM has top priority. So swap on dash S. So the uh, lowest priority would be slash dev slash VDA2, which is what we wanted. We set the priority in the FS tab earlier, if you recall. And we have ZRAM already running. So we have swap to RAM as priority 100, which is the higher priority. So the kernel will try to always use uh, swap to RAM, ZRAM, uh, compressed uh, RAM block for swapping uh, as much as it can um, before even touching, uh, for example, your SSD storage. So that's exactly the way we want it. Uh, we have hibernation functionality and we have uh, uh, ZRAM, uh, both. Um, and I found but through my own tests using running KVMs and uh, uh, launching heavy programs that this works exactly as intended. The, uh, the uh, swap partition is not touched by the kernel unless you're really, really loading up the system. So um, uh, no SSD wear uh, to be worried about here. All right, so let's install the basic uh, XORG packages. So I'll copy paste this here. Again, pause the video as needed. I'm gonna hit enter and go with all the defaults. The defaults here as well, and here too. And let's proceed with the installation. And we'll be back when it's done. All right. And it's done. So um, for Intel graphics um, and uh, for machines that don't have actual synaptic touchpads, uh, if you do, please ignore this next uh, uh, suggestion, but we'd like to remove the uh, video intel and uh, the uh, mouse synaptics input drivers uh, for Cinnamon's uh, best results for Cinnamon. So we just hit enter. Yes, we'd like to remove these two packages. So um, once that's done, we will clear the screen and install the Cinnamon desktop, which is another huge Pac-Man operation. So I'm gonna to have to paste this in here so I don't bore you to tears with all my typing, my slow typing. Again, you'll definitely want to um, uh, pause the video here. If you want a different desktop such as GNOME or, or uh, KDE or XFCE or any of that, this is where you put these packages uh, at this stage. So uh, we'd like Cinnamon here. Um, and so we're just gonna hit enter. And yes, we'd like to proceed with the installation. And we'll be back we'll be back rather when it's done. And it's done. So let us enable the display manager for cinnamon. Uh, like DM is the most appropriate. Um, so let's type sudo system ctl enable lightdm dot service and hit enter. All right. So sometimes for some people, um, this is especially true for faster machines uh, like Intel 10th generation and up. Uh, 
it boots into a blank screen. That's usually because Light DM gets launched uh, too quickly uh, before the graphical environment is set up completely. So in that case, um, since we want that not to happen, uh, we'll need to do a modification of the configuration file for Light DM. So sudo nano slash etc slash light dm slash light dm.conf and we'll go down to the light dm section and we'll uncommon login d dash check dash graphical and we'll set that to true and that usually does the trick with the black screen problem on login. Okie doke. So, moving right along. Um, I'd like at this stage to install some of my flat packs. So, for this tutorial, as an example, would be the video editor KDN Live. So, sudo flatpak install minus y so it doesn't bug me kd n live so no confirmation install of the flatpak paid in live and hit enter looking for the best matches should only be one and it's installing the uh all the requirements for the Kden Live package. It's a great video editor. Uh, and uh, so this is a good example of um, installing a flat pack in this uh, installation. So for any of other flat packs that you may or may not have, or if you don't like flat packs, just ignore this section. Um, it's almost done with installing. So next, what I like to do is install uh, time shift. So we type yay, which capital S, time shift dash bin. So we don't want to build it for uh, time's sake. Uh, time shift. See what I did there dash auto snap so these two packages we'd like so it uh, a time shift uh, snapshot happens uh, with every uh, uh, pacman uh, upgrade and we hit enter and none is fine proceed so it downloads the packages for time shift and installs them And we're done with that. Next, I like the true type fonts from Microsoft, the uh, web core fonts, as they're also uh, called. So TTF dash MS dash fonts. Also lock, like uh, the, uh, to install for convenience sake, the uh, PAMAC software manager. Very handy. Also like a graphical interface for my uh, simple firewall configuration. And also like uh, the front end for the TLP power management uh, packages. So I'll just hit enter and proceed with the installation. Stick with the defaults. And get it going. This will take a while. We're back when it's done. And it's finally done. So now we go ahead and uh, take care of some things for 
what I usually do for my ThinkPad Yoga L13, uh, I've got a programmable charging battery. So I like to install ACPI, score call, dash DKMS. And I also have a Wacom Pen input on uh, this device. So I usually also install XF86 dash input dash Wacom and hit enter. And it uh, sets up the module for our LTS kernel. And it's done. So uh, this is a convertible laptop. Uh, and uh, so what I like to do at this stage is also uh, configure auto rotation, uh, which can come in very handy as if you use it as a tablet. So sudo pacman dash capital S IIO dash sensor dash proxy. and hit enter. Yes. Okay. And um, we'd like to be able to have a daemon in, running in the background that reads the uh, tablet orientation um, so that auto rotation works properly. So yay, dash capital S, screen, rotator, dash git and hit enter. We'll go ahead with the defaults again. Proceed. And it goes ahead and builds it from source. And uh, Cinnamon will uh, be able to use uh, this daemon to rotate the screen depending on orientation, how you hold the uh, laptop or tablet. Okay, that's done. So um, at this stage, you can configure your firewall settings uh, uh, using UFW, for example, or whatever you need. But um, I think we're done with initial configuration. So let's go ahead and reboot the machine into the graphical login manager. And we've rebooted into the freshly installed Cinnamon desktop environment with the display manager asking us for our password. So my password in this case is entered here. We hit login. And there we go. Um, close this. So this is the default. Um, and I just have a couple of things to show you uh, before we um, conclude this video. Uh, first off, let's go into settings. So for auto rotate to work, if you've got uh, one of those convertible laptops, um, we've set up the auto rotation correctly. Uh, as you can see, it already found updates um, since we installed. Uh, so we want to go is to uh, display, go to settings, and you want to enable automatic screen rotation. Or if you don't want, you just leave this set to disable. So with this set off, uh, the auto rotation should work as is. Another thing uh, you want to do is um, go into power management. And what I'd like to do typically is, as you can see, uh, hibernation is available. What I'd like to do is enable hibernate after suspend. The, the default configuration um, for hibernate after suspend is it'll sleep. The laptop will sleep if you close the lid, for example. Uh, it'll sleep for three hours or 180 minutes. And after that, it will actually 
hibernate. It will write out the, uh, the memory image to the uh, swap partition that we set up and, uh, and then actually physically power down so that um, uh, you can indefinitely uh, have it stored uh, on disk uh, for full resume after you uh, power up the laptop again. So that that's great because most ZRAM uh, Linux distros that use ZRAM like Fedora and others as well, um, they don't set up hibernation. And I feel, you know, for laptops, uh, hibernation is a handy thing to have. You may disagree. Um, also, you know, you can completely skip this hibernation stuff uh, if you're installing it to a desktop or even maybe a server. Um, again, I'd like to have the option. So there it is. All right. Um, that's all I have to show with the uh, desktop. So you can go ahead and theme it and do whatever else you need to do. Um, I'll show, click on PAMAC here for a sec. It's got a one available update already. Uh, yes, mTools is ready for updating. So, um, oh yes, before I forget, you want to uh, set up time shift. So time shift can be launched. You put in for a sudo, we can put in our password. And we've got the snapshot type is BTRFS. So let's click next here. Uh, we only have VDA3 to store uh, snapshots. So not much choice here. We click next. Defaults here are fine. Uh, click next. Uh, we'll enable the queue groups. And I typically don't include at home uh, for backups because I like to back up my important, most important files uh, offsite. Uh, uh, I think that's the smartest way to do it. Uh, I use time shift only for rolling back if, a, if an update went, went sideways, but you definitely want to have a separate real backup, uh, not a fake backup like time shift. Um, uh, if you want to uh, keep your data safe, that's very important. I always make backups and backups offsite with a geographical uh, uh, diversity there. So click finish. And then before you do any updates or install uh, software or packages or make too many modifications, I always recommend create the initial snapshot. Okay. Because this is BTRFS, it happens right away. All right. So that's that. Um, and uh, let me go ahead and uh, um, shut down this virtual machine. Thank you for watching this long video. I hope it was useful to you. If so, please support this new channel by liking and subscribing, and do leave comments with questions or for constructive feedback, which I greatly appreciate. See you next time!